back to Springfield in Jersey and tonight's a parents' evening with a twist. Richard Dunn, maths consultant, is going to explain to parents how visualising calculations using paper cups is revolutionising children's understanding, and perhaps their own. I'm going to help you by asking you to look at this rectangle just here. Can you see it? You say yes? Yes. yes. Right. Look, there's a bottom corner here, a bottom corner here, a top corner here, a top corner here. If I hold one juggling ball just here, that's at this bottom corner, isn't it? And that's the top opposite corner, isn't it? Now watch, I'm going to throw the ball to that top opposite corner. When it gets there, I'm going to say, now, and then I'm going to let it drop into my hand. Watch. Now, can you see the rectangle? Yeah. yeah. So, watch the top corner. Now. Watch the top corner. Now. Now watch. Look at the rectangle. Three balls. Now. 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 Can you see? You can see it differently now. Yeah. That you can actually see this very thing that looked very complicated to begin with is now simplified because you're looking at this rectangle. And you can see that I'm better at it when I'm thinking about the rectangle. I'm going, now, 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 now. That is the essence of all good teaching and learning. That some, oh, by the way, can you see the rectangle? Which is interesting because it's not there, is it? What it is, is just a thing which is not really there to support you into seeing it. It looks. When I do it now, it looks as if the balls are moving more slowly, doesn't it? But they can't be. It's only because I've framed your learning, I've given a structure to your learning. The best teaching and the best learning gives young people, gives your children, a structure to their learning. So when I now start some maths, you're going to see that gradually, you're going to see that I'm giving a structure to what your children are doing. So if I go to up here and say to you, look, what we're going to do today is to use the cups. Now, some of you have seen the, heard about the cups, haven't you? Point to the resources table. Try it. Uh, yes, that's right, good. Hands down. <laughs> Point to the resources table again. Good, hands down. Now, watch. This table over here hasn't got any cups on. This is the maths table. All of you, point to the maths table. Good, you're doing well. Now, watch this. I can't pick that up, can I? That's not really cups, is it? That's only ink on the board. These are the real cups, but these are not real. So this is not real cups, this is only pretend. So when you see this, 2 add 1 add 2 equals 5, we call that a maths story. It's not real, it's just pretend. I need a helper. You'll recognise the volunteer, year one teacher, Linda Crawford. I am going to write the maths story. What do I use to write? This, isn't it? And you're going to act the real story. What does she use to act? The cups. <coughs> I'm going to write the math story. You act the real story. I write the math story. You act the real story. I write the math story. You act the real story. I write the math story. You act the real story. I write the math story. You act the real story. I write the math story, and you're acting the real story. And when I write the math story like this, she goes, one, she has to go, I go one, two, three, four. How much on the math table? Four cups. And when she says four cups, she's telling the answer to the real story, isn't she? Mm -hmm. But I write four because I'm writing the math story. The parents' reaction's been really positive. The way she can uh, understand it, talking in cups. When I was trying to do it, even with my fingers, she said, no, 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 mummy, it has to be in cups. But she's doing it in cups. She can understand it perfectly, and I thought, well, that's the way we'll do it, then we'll do it in cups. All well, the cups out the cupboard. <laughs> I will write the math story. You will act the real story. I'm writing Half cups story. are a great way of introducing fractions, Richard's next port of call with the parents. The teaching method has something for visual, oral and kinesthetic learners, even to the extent of moving absolutely nothing to emphasise naught. What's in her hands? Nothing. She's good. She must walk over here. Well done. I think of parents in the same way as a teacher working with a, um, a, a teaching assistant that the important thing is uh, a, a high degree of consistency. Because the novice in any subject, and maths in particular, 
needs consistency for that initial learning in order for the relative untidiness of real maths uh, to make, make, make sense to them. Two times four equals eight. We are going to read what it means, but you will not race ahead of me because you'll get it wrong. Read it with me. Two cups times four equals eight cups. Let's do it again. Read what it means. Two cups times four. No, not cups. Two cups times four equals eight cups. They're cups, aren't they? They're cups. They're not cups. Without using the term place value, the teaching method seamlessly introduces thousands and hundreds. Three thousand add two thousand equals what's the number? Five. What's the word? Thousand. Hey, you're good at this. Three hundred add two hundred equals what's the number? Five. What's the word? Hundred. I will speak the math story, you write the next math story. I speak. Three. Done that all right? Yeah. You spell it okay. <laughs> because this is how we spell three in maths. It's rather hard in English, isn't it? But in maths, it's ever so easy to spell three. That's how you spell three. In math, if I speak the word thousand just here, you just go, do it, because that's how you spell thousand. What's that say? Three. What's that say? Thousand. Add. Two. Now, I know you can spell thousand because you've already done it, haven't you? So when I say thousand, you write, don't you? Equals. Can you spell equals in maths? What's the number? Five. What's the word? Oh, you're good at these. See, what it means is, when we say three thousand, we're thinking of three of those things called thousand. Two, not of those things called cups anymore, is it? So those things called thousand, it's lots, equals five of those things called thousand. So, by knowing that, and knowing what it means, you can work out that 3,000 add 2,000 equals 5,000. Next one. Right, you're right. Go. Three. Good. 100. Good. Add. Good. Two. 100. Can you spell 100, okay? Yeah. Equals. What's the number? Five. What's the word? Hundred. Well done. She told me about the thousand was shouting at me. I, I couldn't quite get over why she was just saying one thousand. But now I understand that it's a word and not a number. So yeah, that's sort of helped to explain how she's learning mathematics. So that's really, really handy to, to have seen that. She come back. She come home. She says. She says, "Mummy." She says, two thousand add three thousand add equals five thousand." I was like, "What?" So yeah, I was very surprised. When you say nine, ding, this means those things called ten. It's nine of those things called ten. When children go home and uh, they'll describe numbers as three t or two t. It does raise a, a few eyebrows um, because it goes against convention, uh, and, uh, and and I know Richard's spoken about convention and, and and how that's easily overcome. What we need to explain to parents is saying three T and two T is part of a fundamental process, mathematical process, which enables their children to access mathematical knowledge much more easily, much more freely. Let's give you a test then. Read that. Four. Good. Three. Yes. Try this. Three. Three. Good. Four. T. Three. T. Two. T. One. T. No. T.
it certainly helps with the, with the child at home to, to understand what he's his way of thinking but rather than like Richard said what we did at school all those years ago but so that does make sense in that respect T take some getting used to I think with the 20 and the, was it 2T1 whatever take some getting used to but at the same time I can understand the logic behind it which does make it a lot simpler that says two doesn't it how much is there here? Two. How much is there here? Three T. How much is there here? Two. How much is there here? Three T. How much is there here? Three T two. I'm going to start by putting three T two on the maths table. What do I write? Add. Lots of cups. 2T1. You written that? I would write that, don't I? Equals. But now, of course, I can't really count the cups because they're not there. But I do notice there's two here and one here. Two add one makes three. That's three cups, isn't it? There's a lot more, because there's three T here and two T here. That makes five T, doesn't it? So there's definitely five T cups and there's <coughs> three cups, all on the mass table. If I show you what's on the mass table, there's five T cups and there's three cups. How much is there here? Five T three. <coughs> And that's how they learn it, so they can now go two, add one is three on the math table. Three T, add two T is five T on the math table. How much on the math table? Five T and three is five T three. And we learn to write it like that children will remember it if it's a visual thing that sticks in their mind rather than just something that they have to look at, perhaps just a whiteboard. When the children see this, on the board, they're taught to do this. 3T2, add 2T1. Have I written that okay? Have I written that okay? Is that okay? What should I write now? Equals. Watch me. And the equal sign makes a picture of the maths table where they're going to put the cups. So they now go two and one is three. How much is there here? Three T add two T is five. If we can achieve some measure of consistency with those parents, then we're actually a long way uh, to enabling people who, young, young people, who in the past have said, I can't do maths, to become really quite mathematical. <laughs>